Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is Keith the Guy, and we got some fish to fry. And I know it's been a while since I did an iPad tutorial, but I went ahead and saw some footage a couple days ago, and I edited it on DaVinci Resolve on my MacBook, and I loved the way it came out. And I was wondering, hmm, am I able to get similar, if not the same results on my iPad? Now, I do have the free version, by the way. I did use a LUT to edit this particular footage, and I'm gonna show you guys how to go about importing a LUT into DaVinci Resolve, so that way we can go ahead and get on with the workflow and start color grading. So first, let's start off with that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is close out of DaVinci Resolve, open up my files folder, go to where my LUT would be, which would be in EOS Digital, and it would be EOS HDC log and film profiles. Now you're gonna hard press it and you're going to press copy, right? And once you copy it, you go to my iPad, double click on the DaVinci Resolve folder, double click on the left folder, hard press and press paste. Now I already got that in this folder, so I don't need to do it again. We're gonna close out of that and we're gonna reopen DaVinci Resolve and your LUT will be right there waiting for you. Okay, so now that we got all that jargon out of the way about how to input your LUTs into DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna go ahead and hop right into the color grading. Now before I start color grading and color correcting, I will mention the footage that I edited on my laptop was Canon raw footage and this is an mp4 version of that only because i don't believe either the free version or the vinci for ipad in general edits raw footage but i think we're going to get similar results so i just wanted to throw that in there so the first thing we're going to do is create our node tree so we're going to create our node tree and we're going to label it and i'm going to go ahead and put seven serial nodes up and name them and tell you exactly what to do with each of them. Maybe eight. Yeah, we're gonna do eight. So the first node is going to be our CST. So we're gonna label that C. I like everything all caps, ST. Second one is gonna be our exposure, hard press, exposure. Third one is going to be where our LUT's gonna be placed. Number four is going to be our balance node. It's gonna be our first balance node. We're gonna have two. And then we're gonna put our balance node number two afterwards. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you guys hear any clicks, that's because I'm using a mouse. I wouldn't recommend editing DaVinci Resolve with your fingertips because our fingertips are a little stubby and it's just gonna get irritating. And I'm gonna show you a little trick in the middle of the video to show you how to properly and precisely, you know, get those numbers right. So I'm gonna continue naming it. So after our second balance, we're gonna try to do a teal look. After our teal look, we're going to adjust our saturation. And then finally, we're going to correct the overall image at the end. So the first thing we're gonna affect is our CST. So we're gonna go to the CST, we're gonna go to effects and we're gonna properly change the color space. That's what CST stands for, color space transform. We're just going to correct the color spacing. So copy and paste these parameters. So we're gonna go to DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. We're gonna go to Rec 709, there you go. And we're gonna do gamma 2.4. Now we're gonna give it some space so you guys could see the footage a little bit better. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna throw in that LUT. Let's go to the LUT folder right here. We're gonna go to EOS HD C log and we're gonna use Cinema 3. So we're gonna drag that into our LUT and we are going to turn off our LUT folder because we need that real estate so we can really take a very good look at our footage and usually your clip will be on I would turn that off because you don't really have a lot of space to view your footage so if you can get as much space as you possibly can I would recommend that so now that we properly put it in 
the proper color space and we added our LUT, let's go ahead and adjust our exposures. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna replicate, exactly replicate what I have here on my laptop onto my iPad. So going into our exposure, we're gonna change the waveform and I'm gonna show you guys the secret I was talking about earlier. Hard press on the number. Oh, double click, my bad. And um, we're going to adjust it using the number pad. Instead of using our fingertips and, you know, tweaking it using the wheels, we're gonna go ahead and just insert numbers instead. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in the numbers that I have on my laptop over here onto the iPad. So for my overall global, I actually brought up the exposure way up because it's super dark to like 106. So now it's super bright. I adjusted my light, brought it down to negative 0.36, right? And I may need to bring it down a little bit more only because like I said, it's not my raw footage. So mm, let's do negative 50. I did not affect my shadows, but I did affect my darks. Not by too much though. I did negative 0 0.03. Forgot to add the negative. Oh, that's too much zeros. So we're going to clear that extra zero, put that there. And then we're gonna to go to our blacks. And I did adjust the blacks as well. Once again, not by too, too much. So it's gonna be 0.05. I actually went negative. So let me erase that. Negative 0.05. Just to recap, I corrected the color space, added the LUD, adjusted the exposure. Now we're here in the balance. Now what I did to the balance is I went to the primary wheels and I went to the color wheels and I realized, hmm, this footage is a little warm. We can adjust that. So what I did is I went negative 80 so we could cool it down a little bit. And that's all I did with the first balance. Now the meat and the potatoes are gonna be in the balance too. So what I did is I brought back a little bit of the warmth by putting it at 30, so three zero. So we're going to adjust the tint to 0.5 negative actually. So we're gonna do negative 0.5, all right. So we adjusted that and now we're going to attack the offset. So what we're going to do is go to the vector scope and we're going to try to, you know, create as much color as we possibly can in our image. And the best way to do that is to go after the offset. So we're going to adjust the RGB. So what I did was adjust the red to 21.35. Boom. We're kind of spreading out the color a little bit and you could actually see it in the vector scope. We're gonna adjust the green to 22.91. Boom. And we're going to adjust the blue to 24.06. Bang. Now we're getting a little bit more of an aesthetic appeal to our footage. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the teal orange effect. Now I learned this from Colin Kelly and he uses this particular thing, but it's like a mid gray card and it shows you exactly where your middle gray is. But I'm gonna eyeball it here because I wasn't able to put it here on the Venture Resolve for iPad. And usually it would be right here in the center of the second column of the curves. So we're gonna create a point there and we're going to actually break the chain and we're going to actually do the orange teal here in our curves. So the first thing we're gonna go after is the red. We're gonna go above this middle point that I created and we're gonna go ever so slightly because the red has a pretty serious effect so just go a smidge, right? And we're not gonna affect the reds down below, but we are gonna affect the green and the blue. So we're gonna go to the green and we're gonna adjust the green accordingly. So it's best to put a point a little bit past your initial point, because if you put the point there, you're gonna accidentally grab the red. So put get the green point a little bit above and then start to drag it down and adjust the green accordingly. So we're going to actually take away a little bit of green. Okay. And we're going to adjust the green down here too. We're going to 
bring in some greens underneath that mid gray point. So now that we're done with the greens, we're going to attack the blues a little bit. So we're going to adjust the blues down here. So like I said, put it at a point away from the point you had prior and just adjust it a little bit. Right. And, um, you know, I kind of like where it's at. Let me adjust the red a little bit more. I think it's a little overkill. Right, and as you could see, it's really flaring up in my skin tones. And we could fix that a little bit later, but for now, we're just going to concern with getting that orange teal look. So if we turn off color grade, we'll see where we started off to where we're at right now. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna affect the saturation. Now, here's a trick that, once again, I learned from Cully Cully himself is hard press on this right go to color space and go to hsv which stands for hue saturation and value right so once you go ahead and change that you're going to go back into it hard press and then we're going to go to channels and we're going to turn off channel one we're going to turn off channel three now why did i do that Basically, hue saturation value is basically your hues, your saturation, and I think value could mean luminosity, not 100% sure. So then when we turned off channels one and two, channel one would be where the hue is, channel three would be where the luminance would be. And we only care about channel two where the saturation would be. If I said we turned off channel two, my apologies, I meant we kept channel two on. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to affect the offset. And the only thing that this offset's going to affect is the saturation because we turned off the hue and we turned off the value. So let's go ahead and adjust the saturation. Now I brought it up a little bit to like 27 mm, let's do 27.20 and brought in some saturation all right boom i love where that saturation's at once again we still got to fix the skin tone which i may need to add a another note just so that we could adjust the skin tones so let's go ahead, adjust the skin tones. Let's put the correction down here and rename this to skin because my skin is just a little too overkill here. So we're going to go to node label and we're going to name this skin. Okay, so let's see if we can go ahead and fix the skin a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my hues, my hue versus hue and select my skin. And then it's going to create a point down here and we can adjust the hue a little bit. Now, let's go ahead and adjust the parameters of the vector scope and select show skin tone indicator so we know exactly where my skin tone should be. And if you could eyeball the vector scope and adjust the hue, it's going to tell you where the skin's falling. And as you could see, a little bit of this was a little bit too off to the red, but I went ahead and adjusted it. And that's how I fixed my skin tone. So the final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually correct the overall footage. Now, mind you, in the version where I edited this on my laptop, I did add some power windows to shape the light a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip that because my only concern is getting similar, if not the same color grade. Let's go ahead and do the final node, which is going to be correct. And we're going to go back into our primary color wheels and we're going to input these parameters. So double click once again, so you can get that number pad on. And I did 24.3 in my red, 24.3, boom. And my greens. I did 24.75, boom. And then for my blues, I did 24.6. 
you know what let's go after actual balance too and adjust that a little bit i think it's a little bit still too much on the red side so let's see if we can eliminate some red you know and adjust our exposure a little bit because um like i said i was probably gonna go back to that to you know fix the to fix the highlights that are kind of blowing out here so we're going to adjust that so we're going to adjust the highlights a little bit because the highlights are a little too strong so we're going to go into the hdr adjust the highlights a little bit so it doesn't blow out adjust the lights you know what i mean so now it's just basically tweaking the footage See if we got a look we kind of like. Now what I think I can do to fix it up a little bit more is add another node and eliminate all that color going on in the black by going into my curves and going to my Luma versus saturation, hitting my black point and then bringing that down. So we could take some color out of the blacks. So yeah, I'm looking over my footage right now and I'm curious on as to why does my footage look a little off? So we're gonna go ahead and change that back over to 21.35. And then another thing that slit my mind, I have my night shift on. So let's go ahead and turn off our night shift. So we're going to go to display and brightness night shift i'm going to turn that off so you guys tell me what do you guys think about my color grade now now that the night shifts off and i went ahead and readjusted the balance too now i'm far more satisfied with this look i don't know go ahead like share and subscribe if this was beneficial to you tell me what do you think about the grade and this is keith the guy and i'm out Deuces.